be seated. Amen. Amen. It's time for prayers. Um, before I go into prayers, I want to mention one or two things um, concerning like what our brother shared, Brother Odu, about sonship. The Galatian church was a church that was used to religion, tradition. And when Paul gave them the gospel, and after a while, they were trying to go back again to tradition, and he was trying to make them understand that you didn't attain to righteousness through the works that you were doing. You attained to righteousness through the work of faith. So who has bewitched you to make you think by holding sacred a day, a new moon, or a special fast in a particular period that you can be righteous. He said, you were made righteous by believing God, not through the works that you were practicing. He said, who bewitched you, O foolish Galatians? He said, you will lose your sonship if you go back to that way. Which way? believing that you can please God through the works of the flesh. Say so you cannot please God that way. He said in Romans 4, Abraham believed God. The righteousness of God is revealed how? Romans 1, 16 to 17, from faith to faith. From faith to faith. So the celebration of a new moon by which you abstain from certain food and drinks, Paul said, will not make you righteous. And if you return to it, you will only be like a dog going back to his vomit. And that is not the way of sons. And if you go back that way, he says, the, like the Ammonites will take part of that person's inheritance because it is held forth by faith in sons by faith. So what Paul was trying to tell the Galatian church is that God will rather you trust him than fast for 200 days. He said, rather he, you trust him, you believe him, you take a step of faith than fast for 200 days and not take a step of faith. He said, that will not bring you into sonship. It will not even please God. It will rather lower your flesh interference with the spirit. When your flesh does not interfere with your spirit, your spirit is able to receive better from God because the spirit and the flesh, they war. So he was trying to correct the Galatian church that they should rather walk by faith. Do you get it? Amen? Amen. Praise God. He didn't condemn rudiments of tradition. He didn't condemn fasting. Jesus said, when you fast, meaning you will be expected as a Christian to fast. It's not an option. He didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. So you're going to fast. But don't replace fasting with faith. Your prayer and your fasting does not equal to faith. Did you get it? Amen. Amen. We want to pray. And I have quite a list of um, prayer points I want us to take. I know a lot of you really, really need a breakthrough right now. I'm honest. If you really need a breakthrough, let me see your hand up. My goodness. Practically the entire church needs a breakthrough as a matter of urgency. And it's not just that people need a breakthrough. Many people are in the process of one thing or the other. That when it materializes or when it, the process is well processed, it will be a breakthrough. Am I correct? 
I know some don't have any right now they're starting, but some have one or two things that they've started. It's a proposal, it's a business, it's this and that. That if this one can just scale through, ah, at least, ah, at least for once, one will relax there, yeah, Abby. And that one will scale through. <laughs> it will scale through. 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 In the name of Jesus. Listen, if processes, lines, laws will have to be suspended, people have to be changed for it to scale through. It will scale through. It will scale through. Your joy will come. Your joy will be full. Your joy, no one will take from you. In the name of Jesus, you will scale through. That proposal will scale through. In the name of Jesus, it will scale through. It will scale through. Remember last week I said repeating is not lack of faith. Actually, it's an oppression of faith. Did you hear me? So it will scale through. I don't know on whose desk it is. I don't know who that authority is. There are seven of them. If it's a magistrate, if it's a king, if it's a power, <coughs> if it's a power, if it's a ruler, either, you know, you know, you know, amen. You know, it says in Second Peter, it says, according as his divine power has given, not will give, has given unto us, how many things? All things that pertain to life and godliness, meaning, if you need a car, it's not in heaven. He has given it and handed it to someone. Did you hear me? He's handed it to someone. If you need your own house, he has given it. It was written. Jesus was to write to Jerusalem on what? A donkey. A donkey matures. Is it two and a half or three and a half years? It's two and a half or three and a half. I'm not sure. Meaning, it was given birth two and a half years before Jesus needed it. Kept in the care of someone. It's not that it will be given. It had been given. As at the time you need it, it has already been given. So when it was time for Jesus to ride the donkey, he said, go two streets away. You'll find a donkey tied. Untied. Bring it to me. If anyone challenges you, tell them. That's sometimes the issue. Because sometimes Satan will raise an opposition. Say, you can't take this car. We are enjoying it. But it's not your own. It's not your own. It was given to you to keep for. Then you must know what to tell it. Because Jesus said, if they challenge you, tell them. Kaya. And you must know, God must give you what to tell them. Because many of those tutors don't want to release what is yours. But today, I will take it from their hands. I will take it from their hands. If it's in the hands of the powers or in the hands of the kings, who like the kings, like a pharaoh, the pharaohs holding Joseph's throne. They were holding Joseph's throne. And when it was time, God collected it from Pharaoh. I gave it to Joseph. I collect your dues. I collect your money. I collect your positions. I collect your judgments. I collect your restorations from every authority where it is kept. I command them to leave those authorities. I am taking it from them as a stronger man. I collect it from them. Why? What, what is the basis of my authority? He that owns heaven and earth, Adonai said to me to terminate poverty. Poverty means what is yours. In another man's hand, when you need it and they don't release it, I take it from their hands. I place it in your hands. I place it in your bands. Receive them in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. There are things kept with prophets. Hannah's child was kept in the hands of Eli. And when it was time, Look at that process. She almost missed it. Almost missed it. Almost missed it. 
If it's in the hands of the prophet, God will help you. Yes. You won't be delayed though. Yes. If it's due today, today you will collect it. In the name of Jesus. If it's in the hands of the magistrate, if it is due today, 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 you collect it in the name of Jesus. If it's in the hands of the king, today, today, and today, you collect it in the name of Jesus. If it's in the hands of the powers, powers, those are men of stature. He said in Isaiah 45, he said, try to remember how he put it in Isaiah 45. I want to get the exact way he put it. Isaiah 45. Praise the Lord. He said, I'll give you the treasures of darkness, hidden riches of secret places. Sometimes, you know, those, um, Jesus was said that he'll be honored with gold. It was the prophecy. Fracases and ma. Who kept those things? Wise men. Where were they? 900 miles away. So they don't even have to be close. Don't worry. There's transfer now. The one else before, they don't need to travel. Abby? And there's transfer. They can even quantify it in dollar. Abby? He said, well, I have a nice car. Don't worry. Quantify it in dollar. If the guy is uh, the latest, but just about uh, 250,000 dollars. Just change. Say, don't worry. Said to me, Abby, yes. there's dollar account self. Yes. Right? Yes. The labor of Egypt, merchandise of Kush, of men of what? Stature. Car. So they are men of stature. And they hold it thinking it's all theirs. That's part of why the rich man died. It's not all yours. Says when wealth increases. The mouth that eats it, what? Increases. So what do you say will happen? See, they will come over. They will come to where? They will come to you. <laughs> okay, from verse 14. Thus says the Lord, labor of Egypt, merchandise of Ethiopia, of Sabians, men of stature shall come over to you. They shall be yours. They will come after you. You know, Jesus didn't move from that hut. They were the one following him. When they didn't find the star, they were the one looking for how to get it. They got it. Abby, it will come after you. Those goods will come after you. They will find you. They will deliver to you in the name of Jesus. Every herald on their path, I remove it. Every obstacle on their path, I remove it. I remove it in the name of Jesus. I prophesy I decree, let there be a sound of joy, of celebration, of thanksgiving, of rejoicing, and of dancing in your life, in your household, from today, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <clears throat> you know, I was wondering when Moses got to the edge of the Red Sea and he was praying, it's normal. Pharaoh is coming after you with chariots. <clears throat> he feels you've deceived him. All his sons are dead. He actually feels he has nothing to lose, so he's coming for your head. I guess it's normal to pray. And God said, stop all that. Stop it. Stop the prayer. What oppression do you have? It's those who don't have oppressions that are praying like that. I found out Jesus never prayed for the sick. He gave them instructions. Never! You can't find it from Matthew to Revelation. Never. When you have oppressions, they use it. Amen. Amen. 
was coming to church this morning and I said to myself, today, today, not even tomorrow, today, any lugu any pada, any lugu pada, any ni gugu change in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't worry. The time of struggling is over. Hallelujah. I've decreed this your time as a time of plenty. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And I guess that's the only prayer point I'm taking. Because that's majorly what you really, really, really need. Really, really, really need. Amen. The other prayer point I wanted to take is also for your health. And what's the prayer? God should give you, let you know what to do. It's not just about praying. Otherwise, you just keep praying over the same thing over and over and over. If you keep praying, Lord, keep me in good health. Keep me in good health. Keep me in good health. What's the answer to the prayer? Instructions. He asked Jesus, your disciples don't fast. Say fast for what? When a man has adequate instruction, what's he fasting for? You're fasting because you don't have instructions. The fast is to hear, to lower the strength of your body so you can hear the instruction. He said obedience is better than sacrifice. Prayer is sacrifice. Instruction is just to obey. So if God says, you're praying for help from now on, Eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this. Finish. You don't pray about health again now. I mean, you just follow that instruction. Say, God, I don't want to be broke. Say, if you know you don't want to be broke in your life, and then you get money, put this percentage for this, this percentage for this. What are you fasting for? So Jesus said, I'm the instruction. He said, to fast is out of order. Kai. So what are you fasting for? It's religion. God doesn't want that one. So I'm the instruction. He said, when I go, then they will need to fast because they need to hear the Holy Spirit. Now, so long as I'm here, why are they fasting? All I need to tell them, Peter, take a hook, go to the sea, drop it by the sea, catch a fish, open the belly. That one, is, when I'm no more here, you don't have that privilege. Now you need to hear God and the flesh is not interfering. Here, if you are eating and drinking and the flesh is interfering, so long as you can see me and you can hear me, oh yeah, Buki, carry this, put this here, put this here. Where you put it? Hey! Right? What does she need to do? To be praying? No. To obey that instruction. I guess we'll just fast as a routine. They don't know what to, what to fast for. They don't know why they're to fast. Jesus said that's why they are to fast. When I go, they will not have that privilege again. Then they will be like all of you. Then they will fast. So that they can keep getting what? Instructions concerning your health. God will give you instructions. Amen. Check the Bible from Matthew to the end. Go wash in the pool of Sulwa. Stretch out your hand. Stand on your feet. Take up your bed. There's no prayer. What you need is what? Instruction. So what am I praying for? That you get the requisite what? Instruction. For what? To maintain a divine good and a steady health. And once you follow it, you don't pray on health again. You pray on other. By the time you have the structure all around, the only prayer you pray is, say, Father, that may know thee. That may uh, walk in the higher calling. Do you get it? <laughs> you follow the flow of finance. That one is, um, is you have more than enough. Follow the story of health, sound health, marriage, power, children, bubbly, grandchildren, I. Everything bubbling. What, what's the issue? The only prayer left is that my faith may grow. That I may understand your backside. I mean, but most people don't pray that one when they don't have money to eat. <laughs> God will give you instructions. Oh God, open their ears that they may hear like the learned. And as they do, Father, speak to them that they may comprehend concerning their health, that they may live in divine health, 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Praise God.
say